take a look at a really important theorem regarding these bases. <clears throat> Let's say we have a set of vectors, and then we've got the span of those set of vectors, which we know is a subspace of V. If one of those vectors in that set is a linear combination of the remaining vectors, and I remove that, we still span the same set. The basic idea is that if one thing is a linear combination of the others, it isn't adding any new information to the set. We aren't getting anything extra that we wouldn't if we didn't have that. So if we remove that thing from the set, the remaining vectors still span the subspace. We can take that thing further, and as long as we don't have a trivial subspace, then some subset is a basis. The basic idea is that if I can just delete the ones that aren't adding anything new, if I remove the ones that are linearly dependent, if I keep going and doing that until I'm left with a linearly independent set, what remains is a basis. Let's do a few examples here. Let's say that I've got a set of vectors, 3, 2 plus t, and 5t minus 4. This last vector isn't adding anything new. How do I know that? Because if I take 5 times 2 plus t, that would give me 5t plus 10, Okay, that's not 5t minus 4, but if I then do minus 14 thirds times 3, then I have 10 plus 5t minus 14 is 5t minus 4. I've got a linear combination of the first two vectors that create the third. That means that third vector isn't giving me any new information. It's not adding anything to this. So if I delete that from the set, I still span the same thing. So 3 and 2 plus t are now linearly independent. Again, easy to check that. So the set 3 2 plus t is a basis for the span of all three of those things. Because the 5t minus 4 wasn't adding new information, the remaining two vectors span that whole set. And because what I'm left with is linearly independent, it's now a basis for that set. Let's take a look at another one here. I've got these three vectors, and I've certainly the span of those vectors is a subspace of R3. And again, there's a linear combination here. If I do 1 times 1, 2, 3, plus 2 times 2, 3, 5, 1 plus 4 gives me 5, 2 plus 6 gives me 8, 3 plus 10 gives me 13. So this third vector is a linear combination of the first two. Because it's only your combination of the first two, by removing it, the remaining vectors, which we know are linearly independent because they're not multiples of each other, the set 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 5, is a basis for the subspace of R3 spanned by the original three vectors. Again, this third vector wasn't adding anything new. It didn't give us anything that we couldn't create out of just these two vectors. 
if we put this together with other things that we've studied, we can say this. The pivot columns of a matrix A form a basis for the column space of A. Because we know that the non-pivot columns are linear combinations of the columns that came previously. So, by basically saying we remove those non-pivot columns, we remove the ones that were linearly dependent, what's left with is linearly independent and spans the same set. What's left forms a basis for the column space. So let's take a look here. Let's go ahead and find those pivots. Let's do some simple row operations. If I do row 2 is negative 2, row 1 added to row 2, and row 3 is negative 3, row 1 added to row 3. I'm not changing the first column, or first row. I have 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. The whole point of these would create zeros there. Negative 2 times 2 added to 4 is a 0. Negative 2 times 3 added to 7 is 1. Negative 2 times 5 added to 11 is 1. Negative 2 times 7 added to 16 is 2. Negative 3 times 2 added to 6 is 0. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 added to 5 is negative 4. Negative 15 added to 11 is negative 4. Negative 21 added to negative 13 is negative 8. Okay, so my next pivot is right here. I'm not actually going to go all the way to reduced row echelon form because I don't need to to find my pivots. But I do want to go ahead and get it into at least echelon form. So I want to zero out the things below the pivot. So if I do row 3 is 4 times row 2 added to row 3. That doesn't affect rows 1 or 2. And everything zeroes out there. So the columns that had pivots were there and there. If I go back to the original matrix and take those columns, that means the set 1, 2, 3, and 3, 7, 5 are a basis for the column space of the, matri the original matrix, if we call that A.